fun thing I do in this is my first and also the last thing I do. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so my topic is cortical pliers. This is our presentation online. The first uh, introduction theory is very experiment and then our conclusion. At uh, first, I would like to introduce the problems. Non-adhesic granular materials can be poured such that they form a cone-like in cone-like pile. Investigate the parameters that affect the formation of the cone and the angle it makes with the ground. So this is our observation. As you can see, when we pour some sands onto the ground, it will form a conical pile. OK, so here comes to our theory. First, I would like to introduce the formation of the cone. When we uh, pour some sands onto the ground, it may bounce away. After you pour more sands onto the ground, it formed a layer of particles. And when you pour uh, another sand onto it, it will cause some disturb disturbance between those particles and thus lowers its kinetic energy. And as you pour more sand onto the ground, it will form the conical piles. Okay, so first we will like, uh, look at the, on the top of the pile, there's a cap. And at the both ends of the pile, the angle it makes with the ground is smaller. But this is not uh, our experiment is focused on this one, the blue angle. And we in our theory, this is the angle of repose. So what is the angle of repose? It is the steepest angle that a stable slope can attain. So if this pile, uh, the slope it makes with the ground is the angle of repose, then if we put pour some sand onto it, it will uh, stop before it reach the ground. But if this is not the angle repose, it will continue moving and then move to the ground. Okay, so if we explain it in, uh, at you, uh, we use the kinetic energy to explain it. When a particle is poured onto the slope, it has an initial kinetic energy. If the initial kinetic, uh, if the Kinetic energy drops to zero before it reaches the ground. Then this is the angle of repose. If it is not, then the particle will continue moving and move to the ground. And what will influence the angle of repose? The first, the first is the normal force given by the particle on the slope, and then the kinetic friction. And we would like to mention that because the potential energy is decreased, the kinetic energy of the particle will increase. All right, so we're concluding these influences into a formula, which is the uh, initial kinetic energy plus the work caused by the normal force plus the work caused by the kinetic friction, and then the kinetic energy it gets from the potential energy is equal to zero. If this situation happened before the, the particle moved to the ground, then the slope, uh, the, the angle of the slope mixed with the ground is the angle of repose. Okay, so back to this image, the blue angle is the angle of, of repose. Okay, we think that the height of the funnel will influence the initial velocity of the particles and then affect the initial kinetic energy. Okay, so here comes to our experiment. Our experiment falls into two parts. The first, the first part is to figure out whether the height of the funnel will uh, have something to do with um, the angle of repose. So we do experiments of 5 and 10 and 15 and 20 centimeters and the weight is controlled as 250 grams. The second part is uh, the total number of the granules because it is too complicated so we measured the number total number of the granules uh, by the weight of it. So we do this parents of 50, 50, 
150 to 200 to 250 grams, and the height is controlled as 10 centimeters. This is our basic form of our experiment setup. The funnel is where we put sense in, and the switch, when the switch is on, the sense are poured out, and the weight is to uh, make a, define a plumb line. Okay, this is our experimental procedure. First, we weigh a certain number of cents and then put it into the funnel, and then we turn on the switch, and the cents are poured out, poured on, and next we analyze it. This is what we get from our experiment. We can divide this, uh, divide this pile into five parts, which are left end, and the center and right and right end part. Okay, so this figure shows the data and those dots were measured, were determined by uh, through a software. And sorry. As mentioned, the both ends and the middle portion of the the pile had been excluded. Because the uh, the left side and right side is what our experiments focus on, and we find the regression line of the remaining dots, which was separated into left hand and right hand, by calculating the value of slope of the regression line, the angle of repose is found out. This is the result of the high experiment. Uh, as you can see. As a uh, as a uh, funnel is higher, the the smaller the angle of repose is, and we think this is because of the initial uh, initial initial kinetic energy. And this is the result of the number of the cents that experiment, and. Between 150 grams to 250 grams, as a as as a uh, total number of the cents is more, the difference between left side the difference between left side and right side is smaller. In our theory, this is because uh, the pressure caused by the cents in the funnel will cause random distribution of the sands that are poured out and thus influence the the, uh, the value of the stop. So as we can see, as the there are more if there are more sands then the difference between left and left side and right side is smaller. Okay, so here comes to our conclusion. First is about the height. The higher the funnel is, the less steep the slope will be. And then the total number of the granules, the more the granules were, the less difference between left side and right side was. Thank you. This phenomenon is caused by diffraction. Because of the feature of the diffraction, uh, we we of the middle right fence is double to ours, and every 
every other widths of band are equal. So it's so so it's this one. Uh, the the principle about it is the uh, any waves can be considered as a typical waves come from the point light source, which was on the wavefront of the forward wave. And And the parallel light is a combination of many spherical waves when the wave from arrives at the aperture. Only a part of it will go through. So in natural spherical waves will be upper. And this in this page I'm going to introduce the diffraction and this and its mass model. When the, when the light goes through the aperture, it will spread out. And the diffraction caused by the difference of the light phase, which is due to a different starting point. When the difference of the phase is two seconds, it will have an destructive inter, interfer, interference. And it's a so-called dark band. And when, when there's no difference, so when there's no difference, there will be a constructive interference and this bright band. Let us let's look at first first formula. It's for finding the first dark band. And let's take a and the second formula is about the second formula we will provide in our experiment. And and that's in, in this page I'm we're talking about this relationship between the number of of aperture and the number of rays. First I'm going to cons consist the in, even number side aperture. Look at the leaf square and each side has two rays. So the image will be like a cross. So hexagon can be considered as a three slit. So there will be six rays. The rays of a hexagon is the is in this picture are little Springing. It's because the uh, side is not straight, it's an uh, arc. And the conclusion is that the number of the side equals the number of rays uh, in the even number. As for the odd number of sides, take a triangle for example. Each side of angle can be uh, considered as a slit. So it has three slits, each slit has two rays, and the number of rays goes to six. So, so the conclusion is that the number of sides equals the double number of rays. And this is our setup. Uh, you can see that the lift is our laser band, and the middle is the aperture, and the right is our screen. And we use laser band because it, the parallel light source, because this this phase are set, and this uh, this is parallel light source. Uh, if you use the uh, if you don't use the laser band, uh, we need to. When to make a distance of the light source and the aperture, it's very far to make sure the brightness of a different phase light is low enough. Um, and the, the sprinkle waves are near to parallel waves, or can or we can use a 
slit to make sure the face are thin and add the length between the light source and the, and the aperture to, to limit the long distance. And this is a this is a slide, and this slide the the below is wider than above, just like the lift picture. And as a formula on the lift, the above part of image is wider than below. Um, it's because the the D is bigger, and the delta Y will be. Smaller, and the delta delta y is the right bent. Yes, and this picture is the square aperture, and this and you can see in the right in the right picture is a pose. So the And this is about the distance between aperture and the screen. The lift, the lift, lift eye is smaller, and the right eye is bigger. Eye is the distance of uh, between the aperture and the screen. And as you can see, the bright band of the lift picture is too close, so that you can't see the dark band. And that's because of yes, and as for the right picture, you can see it obviously. And this is a hot gun aperture. As you can see, the there are six six rays. This is our conclusion. The odd number of sides, the number of uh, the number of sides equals the double number of rays, and even number, the number of the side equals the number of rays. And when the distance between the aperture and the screen is bigger, the diffraction image will be obvious. Okay, thank you.
team B, you can have some questions to team A. Team B go first. Where is your stand come from? And did you make sure the size of the each of the same? Yeah, uh, the sense are uh, some materials in the in the lab in the lab, and we we are sure those size uh, the size of those sense are similar. Oh, okay. Can you show me your setup? Okay. First, I have a question about the setup of your experiments. What is the material of the aperture in your setup? Uh, uh, when, when we experience at a cut strip, we use paper and uh, black paper. And uh, when we use square aperture, we use the uh, white paper. White paper? It's normal paper. Okay. okay, the second question. Uh, did you use a camera to rec rec uh, record your result? Uh, the sound of it. Uh. Did you use the same camera? Yes. Okay. Then, do you consider that the camera might also affect the result? Because it also has an aperture, do you consider that? Uh, yes or no? No. Okay. Then, do you determine whether it is obvious by your eyes or by some software? Eyes or software? Have you done the experiment for the size of the aperture size? Yes. You you mentioned that you not only use camera, but you said that some some of them. Then what do you also use to record your your experiments?
Between the size of the aperture and your the image, what to do? What result do you get? Uh, the when the when the size of the aperture is small, the the the, uh, the, the bright the bright uh, the width the width of a bright bang will be larger. Larger. Okay, so more, okay, then how did you analyze whether uh, it is obvious or it is larger? How did you analyze it? Uh, we take picture and, uh, and uh, yes, we, we look it and think it's larger. Did you use some like uh, measure the length or how or the angle or something, you know, just by your eyes? Yes. Okay. And right, the next part is. How do you set up the device to keep the light from the environment penetrating? Did you see the? Did you say the? How to keep the room is dark? Yes. yes. Um, we. We. We use a dark uh, paper to grab it and turn over all the light and. So it is a dark paper. Yes. Do you consider that the paper might also reflect some lights and in, and influence your results? Um, uh, it's considered, so it won't, the the bright won't be influenced. Why is the experiment picture titled "Upward a Little"? Will that affect the lens of the rays? Okay, so, okay. Next question. If it is even number, will the light be brighter? Is that shown in your experiment? Uh, no. No, you didn't investigate about it. Or? No, we didn't investigate about it. Okay. Next question. Okay, when ad adjusting aperture, how did you control the same uh, luminous flux through the camera? Okay, that's okay. 
by this question. Okay, which kind of camera do you use for experiment? Experiment. Um, which kind of camera? This kind of camera, and we don't. <laughs> which lens? You don't use which lens? Always. Just use a CCD. Oh. Uh, okay, finish. The angle of repose is uh, the is when you uh, form a pile. There, the the slope of the pile it will max the angle with the ground, and the biggest angle of it is the angle of repose. When we uh, define the angle of repose, we see the whole the whole pile because it is a uh, but A or B or C is uh, the, the value of the slope is the same as you can see. Okay, okay, okay. How is it? When we When we when we um, judge what is the angle of repose, we don't look at this small. This is just a small part of the whole pile. The angle of repose is defined as the whole the whole piles. It's not like because when you look at like a uh, so uh, this this scale the. Um, Yes, we've, we've uh, discovered that some, some uh, a little part of the sand will bounce of the pile. But um, in our theory, the angle of repose is, uh, when it reaches the angle of repose, most of the sand will stay on the pile. But of course, a little part of it will still bounce away.
more factors than you thought, but your experimental setup is pretty good and hope that you can quantify the relation between, relation between aperture and the significance of diffraction. And then I would like to talk about our topic. Uh, as they mentioned, well, it is uh, at the angle of repose, there will still be some sense like bias of the pile. In fact, we've, we've noticed this and we think this is about the random distribution. And that in the near future, we would like to investigate more about whether there is a certain pretension, pretension, pretension of the sense level bias of. And uh, when they are, when they talk about their conclusion, they mentioned that we didn't show any video, okay. <laughs> In fact, we've met, we've tech, we have many videos. If you want to talk more about, discuss more about that, maybe we can discuss after this. Uh, thank you. Thank you. 
teachers and teachers do get some questions if A and if B. <笑>我不用放回來的問題 <咳>那我節省時間我幾乎另外一邊他在找資料嘛就是說我不是很清楚你為什麼做出來兩邊的角度不一樣你的<咳> 我們目前的想法是因為我們目前做的沙量都還不夠我們最後只有到250克那可以看照片它就出來只有大概一張大小我們認為如果我們把它的量再更多的話有可能會分布更均量到什麼樣 因為我們其實在這個時間當中我們還有發現到一個現象在這部分我們還沒有就是深入分析就是那我再問你所以整個研究裡面你覺得決定那個角度的關鍵到底是什麼決定那個角度的關鍵如果用一個很簡單你覺
。对，就是你，就这关系是这样的呀。我知道，我是说你拉近拉远，然后这样子重复，对，好几次拍出来结果大概是这样。对，它都是同一个状态。啊，对，同一个状态。
做。好，关于就是刚刚听众提到，就是呃，做出一个类似最终的一个方程式，就是来预测角度这部分，我们这是我们的一个目标。然后我们的第一步是用先用能量去看自己，因为能量是最好去去呃描述的，所以我们第一步就是先用能量去做。然后进一步我们会想要看就是对吸引力，可是因为它是有受到的力，有点受损的几率，几率影响，然后受到的力很复杂，所以这部分可能我们会先从巨观的角度下去看。就是后面几，就我们目前这阶段是先用能量的学习。好，谢谢。还有其他老师们还有想要问题吗？然后，然后，然后，然后，然后，然后，然后，然后，然后，然后，然后，然后，然后，然后，然后，你们是 A， 我是 A， 我是 A， 对，我是 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 A， 对，哎、欸，对，逐个始终是 A 对，先平 A 对，先平 A， 先平 A 对，对不起，好 A 对，呃，逐个始终，七七七，那 B 对，结果呢是 A 对，六五六，那我们下午的课到这边全部结束。